Competition is used in two distinct ways in economics. The first is competition as a process, the competitive process. Uh, this is used primarily by the Austrian School of Economic Thought. It was championed by uh, Friedrich Hayek uh, in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. The idea of competition as a process uh, indicates that we are talking about human behavior here. When compete with oneself, that involves many kinds of behavior. Uh, advertising, product different, differentiation, um, undercutting prices, and improving products are all different ways that uh, producers compete with one another for sellers' business. For sellers' business, it's a way of uh, distinguishing uh, the mar their products on the market and uh, securing market share, but also bringing knowledge information to consumers. Uh, one of the other things is we use a lot of proxies for knowledge. We often have incomplete knowledge and information about the products that we want to buy. Uh, we can rely on so, to some extent on um, firms that come in like Carfax or Good Housekeeping to give us some of that information. But we also use substitutes like reputation or goodwill. It's part of the reason why branding is so important for firms. Uh, one such example is uh, Chipotle. The Chipotle restaurants uh, a few years ago had a crisis where a neurovirus was uh, in their food and making a lot of people sick. And they never really fully recovered from that here in 2020. Um, so the goal of competition as a process is to teach us who precisely will serve us the best. Who will serve us the best? Competition, on the other hand, which is primarily what economists mean when they talk about competition, refers to uh, a situation where everything is static. Competition, in this case, tends to refer to the number of firms and certain conditions in a given market. And we have a spectrum of competition. Uh, on one end, you have perfectly competitive markets. That is, there are many, many firms. They all sell identical products. Um, people can buy and sell however quantity they want at a given price. Neither the buyer nor the seller can affect a price. Uh, and on the other end, you have monopolies, which is there's only one firm, and that firm uh, gets to set the market price. Uh, when we talk about competition as a state of being, Perfectly competitive markets are held up as an, as an ideal type. Deviation from a perfectly competitive situation can mean market failure. We're going to go into more detail on that in the next lecture when we start talking about perfect competition. Why does this, thing, why does this, this distinction matter? Well, it matters a whole lot when, once we start talking about policymaking, which we will in the next couple of lectures, when we start talking about uh, public goods and how government uh, plays in the market. Identifying a situation where you have genuine market failure uh, or deviation from perfectly good uh, norms versus a process where competition is playing, playing out to get to a more efficient outcome is going to matter for setting policy. Related to that is the identification of market failure. How, it, how can we be sure that, a, that what appears to be a market failure according to competition as a state of being is not a failure as, uh, as indicated by competition uh, as a process? Um, if you try and set policy that harms competition as a process, it can actually lead to worse outcomes in the economy. Uh, how individual behavior in the marketplace, uh, how uh, people behave is uh, important in understanding competition. The ironic thing about a perfectly competitive market is that it actually has no competition as most people understand that. Most behaviors are uh, actually deemed anti-competitive. The distinction helps uh, make uh, an argument one way or the other helps us sharpen our thinking about competition and what is actually being observed in the marketplace.
Finally, the big distinct the big reason this distinction is important is it helps us determine whether we are looking at a gen market failure, thus an opportunity for uh, government to get involved and uh, potentially make things better, or if there's a profit opportunity to be had, and thus uh, the process of competition can come along and solve this issue without the need for a heavy-handed government intervention. This distinction will uh, permeate our lectures going forward. But uh, we will be focusing in the next two videos on the two extremes of uh, competition as a state of being, perfectly competitive markets and monopolies, and how firms make distinctions in those markets.